Hi everyone, you are watching realm24.com and today we will be disassembling the Realme C61. First, we need to remove the SIM and memory card tray. To do this, we use a special ejector tool. Push the tray out and set it aside. Next, we need to heat the back cover to approximately 70 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Fahrenheit. We are using a heating pad but you can also use a hair dryer. And after heating for 5 to 10 minutes, we can start detaching or separating the back cover. For this, we use a thin plastic film. Insert it into the gap between the back cover and the mid frame and carefully try to separate the back cover. In our case, it is not coming off easily. The back cover is slightly recessed. We need to create a small gap first to do this, we use a metal tool, but you really shouldn't do this, to be honest, as a metal tool can easily damage the back cover or internal components. But if you decide to use a metal tool, be extremely careful. In our case, we probably just needed to sharpen the edge of the plastic film to make it easier to slide in. Finally, we manage to get under the back cover, we carefully run the film along the edge to cut through the adhesive underneath. As always, be especially careful around the camera area to avoid damaging the lenses. And there are the side buttons and fingerprint sensor, as there may be flex cables attached. We have now removed the back cover, next we need to protect the camera lens. Carefully cover it to prevent dust from getting inside. We apply the protective film not on the lens itself, but on the rim around the camera. Now we move on to unscrewing the screws in the top and bottom sections of the midframe. For this, we use a 1.5 mm Phillips screwdriver or Phillips hash 3 o An important tip on Realme phones, part of the adhesive might cover some screws. So as you remove screws, look carefully under any remaining adhesive to make sure no screws are left hidden. Also, if you are trying to remove a section and it is not lifting or feels stuck, check for leftover adhesive on the mid-frame. There may be another screw hidden beneath it. We unscrew any remaining screws we may have missed and then we proceed to detach the mid-frame. First, we use a thin plastic film, inserted into the gap between the mid-frame and the display frame near the seam tray area and release a few clips. Then we switch to a slightly thicker tool. We carefully go around the edges, separating the mid-frame. Please note, the mid-frame is held very tightly along the edges. And be very careful around the display edges to avoid damage. It is easy to crack or chip the corners, which could leave small unpleasant holes along the display's edge. We have opened the midframe and gently flipped it over. As you can see, the fingerprint sensor has fallen off the midframe. That is okay, it was likely no glued in well. Next, we use a non metal tool to disconnect the battery connector, then disconnect the fingerprint sensor connector and set the sensor aside. Now we move on to the bottom section. First, we remove the speaker. Look for the correct spot where we can pry and lift it. After gently prying it up, we see that it is not the speaker itself, just a cover with the contact pads. The actual speaker is built into the display frame. Then we disconnect the interboard flex cable and the coaxial cable connector. Now we can remove the subboard. It is held in place by two clips. 
one at the top and one at the bottom. Be very gentle and don't force it. Subboards are typically quite thin and fragile and it is easy to damage them. Again, look for the right spot to gently pry and lift it up. Once removed, you can see that the subboard houses the charging port, microphone, headphone jack port and other components on the backside. The speaker and vibration motor remain in the display frame. Now we do our usual microphone opening inspection test. The microphone port is built into the display frame and has an L shape. Inside the hole is a mesh that protects against dust and debris. The microphone itself is on the rear side of the subboard, so if you try to stick something into the microphone opening, you will damage the mesh, but not the actual microphone. Next, we move to the main board. We disconnect the interboard flex cable, the display flex cable and the coaxial cable connector. Then remove the coaxial cable from the clips that secure it to the motherboard. And now we can disconnect and remove the rear camera and set it aside. Then we disconnect the front camera. It is a good idea to cover the lens to prevent dust from getting on it. Set the camera aside. And now we can remove the main board, just like with the other. And now we can remove the main board, just like with all the Realme phones. It is important to find the correct spot to pry, as the board is most likely held in place by clips. Once we find the right spot and gently pry, the main board should come out easily. And we will notice a thermal paste applied to the back side of the board. Finally, we move on to removing the battery. There is a transparent film covering the battery. There is also a black pull tab in the center that we will need to lift carefully. First, peel back the transparent film so it doesn't interfere or hold the battery in place. This allows for easy removal. Now carefully lift the black pull tab and gently pull it upward to remove the battery. Underneath the battery there is a clear adhesive layer that protects the interboard flex cables. And that is it and the assembly is complete. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video or on our Telegram channel or on our website. Okay guys, now we're done, thank you for watching, if you like what we do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, or read our articles on our website, take care of yourself, and until next video.